All right, in this tutorial, we're going to play around with uh, the putting type on a face that makes up the face. I'm going to show you a few different options, but I'll try to show you the quickest way, then maybe playing around if you want to go a little bit further with it. First, we're going to start off with the new document, Command-N. And I know that if I go to my InDesign file, and the first page is what I need, what I should do first is set up a... Uh, placeholder. So I'm going to set up my placeholder for my first page. And yes, I did mine on Bob Dylan, so I'm just going to use a Bob Dylan picture. I'm going to make it uh, the uh, the fill is going to be black, and I'm going to fit it to the spine and the bleed. Make sure you extend it to the bleed, and it should be 8.625 by 11.25. But remember, if I copy that and bring it into Photoshop, Command N, it's going to remember those dimensions. If I set that to inches, 8.625 by 11.25, perfect. I definitely need the resolution to be 300. It's for print. I can keep my information at RGB, so I can play around with everything, uh, or I can keep it at same YK. It's really up to you, but RGB will give me the best option to play around with a lot of different things in Photoshop, and we can convert it to same YK after. So I'm just going to create uh, my new board, and there it is. And I've already found a picture of the Bob Dylan that I really like. It's high quality. It's high resolution. It's going to play well with some nice darks and lights. And realistically, I'm going to click and drag, bring that into my new document. Realistically, we're looking for a black and white document uh, picture, sorry, because we're going to end up playing with it. Command T just to scale it up. And I'm just going to make it fit in a certain way. I think I like the way that cropped in quite nice. That's good. So like I said, you're probably going to want to, if you have a full color image, you're going to want to bring down the contrast. I'll show you even though mine's already black and white. I'm just going to click on this. What I want to do first is this picture, I want to make it a smart object. You're going to see why we convert it to a smart object later on. We're going to put a smart filter on it. Plus it's always good to bring our raster images into Photoshop and make them smart objects right away. Remember, they save the data. The original data that was involved with this, actually what I should have done is done it before I even transformed it, but for now this is okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do a quick hue and saturation adjustment layer and I'm just going to bring down the saturation. Now obviously mine's already black and white so it's okay. Then if I want also I can go to brightness and contrast or I can use levels and curves, whatever you're comfortable with, and just bring up the brightness or contrast and just play around with uh, kind of what you want to see there just so we have good light lights and dark darks and all like I said let's play around a little bit more with that but generally the picture is phenomenal so I'm not going to play with that too much and I'm happy with that and I'll leave all that and what I'll do actually I'll take this whole thing command G and I'll make it a, uh, a group and I'll just say pick because we're going to have picture we're going to have type and that's it the very first thing I want to do I'm going to click on the actual picture with of the and the smart object of whatever picture I have, you have the artist you chose, and I'm going to go to filter and I'm going to click on um, blur and Gaussian blur. This is part of the displacement method that's going to help us mold that type to the face. So I'm going to set the radius to 20 pixels. I'll say OK. And now I have a blurry image of him. What I want to do now is I'm going to save this, but we're going to do a couple different saving methods here. So just bear with me as we go through this. This untitled one, I'm going to file. I'm going to save as, and I'm just going to say, call it displace. And what you should do is probably organize it in an organized folder. But for now, I'm just going to put mine on the desktop and say displace.psd. And I'm going to save that. Done. Now, the good thing about the smart object and smart filters, I can shut that off. And I don't need that blur anymore. Or if I did it on a, in a destructive way, I automatically blurred the actual pixels, which is not what I want to do. So I was able to shut it off. Smart filter is fantastic. Now what I want to do is I want to grab some type. And the, the type I'm going to grab, I'm going to show you a couple different ways to do it. What I can do is I'm going to go online and I'm going to type in, uh, you know, a Bob Dylan uh, song, uh, any song. I'll just type in lyrics. And I'm going to go to uh, Bob Dylan lyrics and I'll click on any song. Uh, Hard Rain's going to fall, great song. And I'm just going to copy and paste, or I'm just going to copy the content. Then I'm going to go into InDesign. Here's a little trick we can do. Because the problem with this is I need the text to flow straight across quite nicely. And if I paste this in, I'm going to make a new document here in InDesign. If I paste this in to InDesign, which I'm going to just command V, it remembers the information. Uh, what's going to happen is it just has all these breaks in it. Obviously, the hard returns are in there. Let's even turn on our uh, 
show hidden characters, and we can see, yeah, all the hard returns are in there, end of paragraphs, whatever we consider them, the pill curl. So what I'm going to do is I want to get rid of them, and a very quick way to do that, instead of going and, you know, deleting each one and kind of trying to figure that out, I could just select it all, Command F, and in here, under text, I'm just going to click on this little at symbol. It has a bunch of already default ones that we kind of want to delete or find. I'm just going to click on end of paragraph. And the symbol for that is here in this little P. And that's all I'm going to say. In place of that, in place of those hard returns, I just put a space. So I'm just going to put a space. So now that I have that, I'm just going to say change all. And look, I found 60 instances of that pill, of the pill crow, which is the hard return. And it's going to put a space instead. And that's all that happens. And now it's really well laid out. Perfect. Done. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to select that. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go back into Photoshop. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to select my text tool. And above the group pick, I'm just going to click and drag. Usually it's going to end up clicking and dragging over the, whole, the top of the whole canvas. And I'm just going to paste. Now what I've done here already is I've done something very helpful for myself. I'm going to show you what I did. Under the character panel, well, actually, let's first start with the paragraph panel. On the paragraph panel, I did a justified text. That way, it goes all the way from left to right. If I just do a ragged right or a center, it's not going to work because it doesn't fill in the little areas here. And we definitely want that. So I'm going to justify it. Uh, any way, justify doesn't matter because we're going to extend the type past the text box. Then on my character panel, I chose a very thick, a very bold typeface that has good positive space and negative space. So there's good lights and darks throughout the whole thing. If I just chose something very light, that's not going to work too well. You're not going to be able to see it very well. So what I want to do is I chose an extra black condensed. You could choose anything. I like condensed because it's nice and tight. And I played with it a few different ways. But as long as it's justified, as long as it's a thick, bold type, you can play around with the letting. If you want the letting to be even tighter, uh, you could play around. Sorry, that was the tracking. If you want the letting to be tighter, you can make the letting tighter, which I strongly recommend. Not too tight. You don't want it to overlap just yet. We want to play around. And if you want to adjust the tracking, you can adjust the tracking and make it even tighter. So that's so all I'm going to do with that. And obviously all caps. All caps usually works out because once again, it really makes it nice and tight. So I'm going to select all that type, copy it, and I'm just going to space and paste. Space and paste. And keep on doing that until it fills my entire text box, which I'm quite happy with. And what you should do is maybe extend it a little bit further down, extend it a little bit further on the sides. It doesn't matter if it cuts off the type or not. And extend a little on the top too. That way the type doesn't just sit on the edge. It kind of goes a little past the edge, making it look like there's more to it, which is fine. So this is more or less what I'm going to be seeing. Now what I want to do with this as well, I'm going to take this type, take it out of my pick folder and I'm going to convert this to, uh, to a smart object. When I convert this to a smart object, I can always go back, double click on it, and I can re-edit the type anytime I want. I can take some out, change it up, whatever I want to do. But for now, remember it opens up in a separate document, a PSB, and I don't have to save it anywhere special. I could just save it and close it or whatever. Just don't save. That's fine. And I'm still back here. And what I can do with the type, it's all together. I can move it around, whatever I want to do. But I'm not going to do nothing with that just yet. The only thing I want to do with this now is I'm going to Command J. I'm going to duplicate that layer just so I have one originally and one that I'm going to displace. Now is where that displace comes in handy. I want to click on it. And I'm going to go to Filter and I'm going to go to Distort and Displace. Now it's going to ask me something. Everything you just leave as is. But I'm going to say OK. Now it's going to want to find the file that I originally saved, the blurry version of this we did before. Because it's going to take this type and displace it to this blur, which is going to start conforming and kind of moving, contorting the type around the curves. I'm going to say open. And you'll watch and see how it just kind of slowly curved it. If I go back and you see kind of where it went from there to there, it kind of curves it right straight across. And then it curves it, kind of conforms contours to the face. And that's all I want to do. My next step is I'm going to command click on the type. And what that does, it selects all the type. But I'm going to shut that layer off so only the selection is set, the, mar the marching ants, the little selection there. I'm going to click on just my picture, just the picture, and I'm just going to say Edit Copy Merged. And that's it. I'm going to Paste, Command V, and there is my final, which you kind of can't tell yet. I'm just going to shut my picture off, and I'm going to group my type 
into a layer called type. So under my picture, I have my adjustment layers and my actual picture. In my group layer, I have the two type uh, layers, the one that is smart object, but I can always go back and edit, and the one that's been displaced. And now here it is. <clears throat> now to fine tune this to make it look even better, what I can do is I can change up the background color. I'm just gonna click off the lock. I'm gonna click on the uh, background layer, and because my foreground layer is black, and if I wanna make it black, I just double click on make it black. What I can do now actually is a little trick. You could do a command, or sorry, option delete and it will automatically fill that space with black, the foreground color. And here is more or less my final piece. It conforms well, it looks really nice. It's pretty, pretty cool, I like that. But I do wanna show you a couple different options we have because it's actually pretty easy. Get a picture, desaturate it, make sure the contrast is good, and make a blurred displacement version of it. Then bring in some type, convert it to a smart object, and then control click the type, shut the type off, Go to the picture, click on the picture, edit copy merged, and you're done. That's it. So there's a lot of different versions we could do of this. And I tried to play around with a few different ones. So here I originally had my picture with my adjustments, okay? Then I had my type, and I played around with the type. Here's my first set of type that I played around with, which was uh, I kind of played around with an angle. And that looked pretty cool. My final piece that ended up with the angle was here, I believe. Here. Then I did one that was really, really tight text. It overlapped each other. It was very, very tight, the lighting, the tracking, everything. And that looks pretty cool too, but it all depends on what you're kind of going for. So you could play around with this quite a bit. And the last one I did, I kind of created a, an idea map. And I did that in, uh, in InDesign when I grabbed a bunch of different titles of songs, or you could do... Um, uh, sorry, uh, song titles, or you could do like a, an actual lyrics of one particular song, and I just played around with how they would work horizontally, vertically, and kind of stretching them and playing around with it. I copied that whole thing, because they're all vectors, and they're all outlined, I just copied them, brought them in, and placed them around the board in a puzzle piece kind of way. That's why I made it, put it in a square format, so it was easy to make a puzzle piece out of it, and I just did that. I thought that looked pretty good too, and it works really, really well, and that's the one I'm going to end up using. So realistically, you could have, you could do that too. Just overlay them, but realistically, I'm happy with this. So more or less, we're done, but I want to go a little step further because what I can do now is I'm going to add some color. I'm going to add my own color, but I'm also going to start talking about layer comps. So I'm going to open that up right now, window and layer comps. Okay, so what I can do, so just even to show you the other version of one of them I could do, I'm just going to duplicate this type, that layer, and I'm just going to uh, take the type, Oh, did I duplicate that layer again? Didn't want to do that. There and there. Okay, perfect. So I've duplicated the type. Now instead of me, I'm just going to get rid of the displacement version of it. And I'm just going to take the type that I've already had. I'm going to shut this one off. I'm going to take the and bring the picture back. And the type that I had, just like before, I'm just going to Command T. And I'm just going to move it this way and move it this way. Just playing around with whatever I want to do. Rotate it, do whatever you want, distort it, anything. I'm going to do the exact same thing I just did before. I'm going to hold down uh, Command and click on the type. I'm going to make the type invisible. Select the picture. I'm going to edit Copy Merged. It selects everything visible, and that's it. I'm going to paste. And there is my final. I'm going to shut everything off so I can see it. And there's my final one with the type going this way. So you could constantly keep duplicating, duplicating, duplicating. But other than that, oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to actually displace it. Let me do that one more time. But actually, that looks really cool too, so I'm glad I did that. So let me do that one more time. I'm just going to delete this. I'm going to click on that content again. And I'm going to click on, I'm going to duplicate it, so I have a duplicate version of it. I'm going to uh, filter, and I'm just going to go through it all again, distort, displace. And I'm just going to say, okay, and this is the displace PSD I want, okay. And then it actually curves it. My apologies that I didn't do that, I should have shown that. And now I'm going to uh, copy it, command click, shut off the type, go to the picture layer, 
edit copy merged. And now I have the proper version of that. Command V, bring it up to the top, shut everything off, and there's my final displaced type on top of that. So there's another version of it you can play around with, but either way, now I'm going to get into the layer comp. So what I want to do, I'm going to, at the top layer, and I'm going to make these also a group layer. Command G, select both, Command G, and I'm going to type, click on final. Those are my final pieces. I have a type 1 and a type 2, so I have different type versions. So I have a lot going on there, but nice and controlled. So I'm going to click on my adjustment layer. I'm going to have a solid color, and I'm going to choose any color I want. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to click a bright red. And actually, that's pretty cool too, but I'm going to send this to the very top. I'm going to choose three more, two more colors, another solid color, and this time I'm going to choose a darker color. Doesn't really matter. And I'm going to choose one more color, and this time I'll choose a brighter color, more saturated color. And let's see what it does. Okay, there we go. So I have three different colors, and what I'm going to do with those, I'm going to select all three, click on my blending mode, and make it color. So on my color now, you can see it does some pretty cool stuff there as well. So I'm doing a blending mode of a certain color, and the red does that, green does that, there's a turquoise, kind of turn, turns a turquoise, and we have this pink. These are really, really nice colors, actually. But what I want to do is use a layer comp. What a layer comp does, if I have a ton of different layers, and I have different versions of how they're going to be laid out, I could actually save the visibility and invisibility of a layer set. So I'm going to say that I like this picture with this pink and I'm going to click on that and say add a layer comp and I'm just going to call this one pink. There I go. Done. I have a pink version of that. Now I'm going to make another one. I'm going to say I like the green one but I want to use this version. Okay cool. I'm going to add that as a layer comp and I'm going to call that one green. I'm going to make one more layer comp. I'm going to say the red one but you know what I think the red one works better with like this. So I'm going to choose that one and I'm just going to click on a new one and just call it red. Okay, there my layer comps. Now watch what happens with the visibility of all these when I click on my layer comp. It switches to that visibility. Click on the green, it switches to that visibility and shuts off the other ones. Click on the red, it only shows that visibility. So this is a great way to show different versions and visibilities of layers in one set. So it makes it much easier for you. But what I'm going to do now, I'm going to save this, because right now it's saved as displace.psd. Well, that was the blurry version. So let's save this properly file, save as, uh, let's save it as desktop. And this time I'm going to say display setup. And what I like to do is put in the year. But for now, I'm going to leave it as displace setup, the actual full setup file. And once again, I should save it in an organized file, but I'm just going to say save. And I'm good. Now, the last thing I need to do is convert it to a... Um, CMYK to convert to CMYK. So let's go to image mode and see what let's see what happens when we convert to CMYK. Is it going to change up the color or not? And I'll, I don't want it to merge. I'm so like, okay. And don't rasterize. And it might change up the color because of some of the adjustment layers, but we're going to see what happens. If we need to have an exact color, we can make that work. If not, we can be happy with what we have so far. And let's see what CMYK does. Okay, it changes it up quite a bit, and quite frankly, I like that too. Let's see what happens here. Yeah, it just subdues the colors, obviously, as we know that CMYK does, but I'm actually kind of happy with it. Uh, I'm not too worried. Actually, I really like that. If I want to bring it back, I can. Uh, if I wanted to, I could say, you know, I don't want it to be RGB yet, or sorry, CMYK yet. I can undo it. I can merge it all, so let me actually try that. I'm going to go back to RGB. Actually, cancel. I'm just going to undo Command Z. And I say, you know what? I really like this color, so what I'll do is I'll grab this and this, and I'm going to merge it. Command Option E. When I Command Option E that, I have a merged version of it. I'm going to shut everything off. And then what I can do is... Oh, it was a bit much there. Oh, I see what I did wrong. I forgot to add this. So I'm going to select like this, this, and the background layer. My apologies. Merge those. And now I have the proper version of that. And now if I change it to CMYK, nothing should change in terms of the color. There we go. So that's exactly what should happen. And then I could save this because now it's CMYK, which is the way you should save it. And then I could go back. But you know what? I'm going to shut that off and I'm going to go to this original color. I'm just going to leave it as is. So if my layer comp saved, it's CMYK and only a little bit of color change. But if I want to keep a certain color, I can. You know how to do that. I'm just going to save this 
and I'm going to close it. I'm going to go to InDesign, which is where I want this all to go down anyways. I'm going to go to my magazine file, and I'm going to click on my placeholder for the, for the cover. I'm going to go to File, and I'm going to Place, Command-D, and I'm going to click on my actual PSD if you want. You don't have to save it as a TIFF. Watch this. This is pretty interesting. I'm going to click on the Displace Setup PSD, and I'm going to Show Import Options. Now, if I go to Open, look what it asks me to do. It says, do you want to show different layers? We know we've seen this before. However, Layer Comp, I can actually show the different layer comps that I made for myself in Photoshop. The pink version, the green version, and the red version. I'm going to stick with the red version for now. I'm going to say, okay, that's the one I want to see. Now, once again, yes, I can change the layers, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to say, okay. And it's going to place my picture inside of the already existing frame. My bleeds are all set up. Perfect. Now, what you'll have to do is go back because if you found a color that you like say you chose the purple you're gonna have to probably go in and introduce that purple somewhere in your pages two and three to make more sense now because I chose this red it actually works really well with my existing colors so that is something now if I do want to change this what I can do I can click on the frame go to object and click on object layer options and I can change layer comp again say so, you know what I really like that pink I click on it, it takes a while to load. Because remember, you're playing with the PSD, we'll say okay. And I was like, well, I really like that. I'll play around with positioning, I'll play around with the placement, things have changed a little bit. And maybe now I need to change the color of some of my accent colors here to more make sense of what I have going on here. I'll click on my eyedropper, maybe I'll try to pick a, uh, a nice color here. A little bit better. I could add that to my swatch panel, and there it is, the CMYK process, and then I could start using that as well if I wanted to uh, across the board, and start changing things up if I need to. Just putting it out there that how this is how we would roughly go about doing that. But this is how we would place it in, and this is type on a face or typeface.